Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to number items in a continuous form in your Microsoft Access database. Now, today is a follow-up to yesterday's video where I showed you how to do this in a report. And in a report, it's super simple. You just make a text box that's got a value of 1. You turn the running sum property on, and that's it. Well, with forms, it's not that simple. Forms don't have a running sum property, so you have to get a little more creative. All right, so we need a couple of functions today, and that's why today it's an expert level video. Expert is what I call the level between beginner and developer. All right, beginners are just figuring things out. They're learning how to build forms and stuff like that. Developers, VBA programming, all that. We don't have to go that far, but we do need to know a couple of things for today, a couple of functions specifically. So first off, go watch yesterday's video if you haven't already, just so you kind of know what we're doing. You'll need to know how to use calculated fields today. We're gonna make a calculated field to display that sort order. You'll need to know how to use dcount. dcount is the grand nephew of dlookup, so go watch this video. And go watch this video on the nz function. nz converts null to zero, and this will only come up if you have zero records in your form, but it will come up. So go watch this too. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch them and come on back. All right, so I'm just gonna pick up using the database from yesterday. And in here, I've got a customer list form. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a calculated field to the left of this guy. So we're gonna slide everybody else over just a little bit. So we're gonna draw a box right through here and we're gonna go just like that, all right? And I'll just copy customer ID, copy, paste, and we're gonna slide you over there, like so. And we're gonna get it right in there. Now that blue is what I use to indicate to the user you can double click on it and do something, but you can't do anything to this one, so we're just gonna format it and make it like a light gray. Gray tells people, ah, you can't change that. Okay, let's bring this bottom up like so. Double click on this guy, that'll bring up his properties. Let's go over to the All tab, and let's give it a good, oops, scroll up to the top here. There we go. Give it a good name. Let's call it Sort Order, or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Now, Control Source is where you're getting your data from. It That could be a field in the table, or it could be a calculation, like a function. So I'm going to hit Delete, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see this better. Shift F2, I'm in the Control Source property, right, right in here. And here's what it's going to look like. We're going to use the Decount function. What I wanna do is I wanna count all of the items that have a customer ID less than or equal to the current one, right? Because the first record, if you count the number of items that have a customer ID less than or equal to the first one, that's gonna be one, right? Because it's equal to the current one. The second record is gonna have two items that are less than or equal to the current item. So we're gonna use decount for that. So this will be equal to D count. Now you could put a field in here for the first parameter or just put a star in there. That counts everything, right? From what table, the customer T, where the customer ID is less than or equal to the current customer ID. So I'm gonna close the quotes and put and customer ID in here, okay? And then we can close the parentheses. What that does is it puts the current customer ID from the current record in there, right? One, two, four, six, 35, whatever it happens to be, it goes inside of here and then it evaluates that and it will count the total number of records from that table that have a customer ID less than or equal to the current one. Now, for the case where you have no records in the table, we have to intercept that with an NZ function, right? If that returns a null, we don't want an error. So we're gonna go NZ that comma zero. Right, so if this returns a null, you're gonna get a zero. All right, hit okay, that puts it in here. Save it, close it, and you could put a number or something up here in the label, watch this, I usually just do this. I just slide that over like that. I'll put a number in here and then just space that guy over. I don't mess around with the labels too much, unless I need those labels for something. Like sometimes I make it so you can click on one of these labels and it'll sort by that column or something. Usually they're just for display, so I don't care if I have multiple labels like that. All right, save it, close it, open it, and there you go. 
right? Take a look at this guy, all right? How many records are in the table that have an ID less than or equal to that one? There's three, all right? This one has four, this one has five, this one has six. Notice I deleted a bunch of records in the middle. Remember last class, right? Now, if you delete some more, if you come over here and delete some more, you will have to refresh that calculation, hit F5, or it will recalculate next time you open up the form, okay? And yes, you can throw events in there and you can have it recalculate automatically and blah, blah, blah. But all of that involves some VBA programming, which we're trying to avoid right now. This gives you a nice simple count of the number of records, okay, based on the customer ID. And yes, I just noticed that error down here. Now this error down here is because we're sending a null value into the dcount function. So what we could do is we could tweak our function even more. We could do this. Right here, it's sending customer ID. This, this is actually a, a null here, and it's, it's causing a problem with this function. So you can actually put an NZ around this guy, and if customer ID is null, send a zero in. Then you're gonna get a count of how many records have a customer ID less than or equal to zero, which should return a zero. Let's see, save it, close it, close it, open it, and there we go, we got our zero down there. See, that's perfect. Or if you really wanna get cool, <laughs> you could return the next number here by just returning the total count of all records. That will get a little trickier and I would use an if function for this, if, right? If you're not familiar with the if function, go check this video out. It's basically an if then statement inside of a function. So here what I do is I'd break this up and I'd say if, is null customer ID, which means we're on the last record, right? Then I'd put in here, let's call it for now X, which will be the total count of records. Otherwise, I'd do the rest of this stuff. Right? And if that's the case, we're getting rid of the possibility of this being a null in here, so we can get rid of this NZ there. We just say and customer ID and get rid of that comma zero and that with parenthesis right there. All right, so now here what we'd put here is the count of all of the records and then just add one to it. So D count star from customer T, right? Count all the records and add one. Try to get that so it fits, right? It's not gonna fit, is it? I'll put a space there. There we go. <laughs> Okay, hit okay, save it, close it, close it, open it, and there we go. There's our next new one. So we're basically saying, okay, if you're on the new record, if it's blank, then count all of them and add one. Otherwise, count the record you're on and go below that. And that's the benefit of decount. Now, those of you who've been with me for a while probably have a couple things ringing through your head. First of all, I try to pound into your heads not to use these dlookup, dcount, dsum functions in continuous forms or queries, right? Because they are slow. Because for each one of these records, it has to calculate and count all of the other records in the table below it. So that is not by any means a quick calculation. The fact that it seems like it's instantaneous is because I only have 22 records in a local table. If you got 50,000 records and you're pulling these over a network, this will run slow. All right, there's no qualms about it. Or if you're running SQL Server, this will run slow. There are certain things you can get away with in smaller databases and local databases than you could over a network, all right, or over the internet. So just keep that in mind. I do not recommend using dcount in continuous forms unless it's something simple like this in a small table. Yeah, but this is the only way I can think of to do it unless you, you know, pull the records down into a temporary table and do all kinds of crazy tricks and, and yeah. The other thing I wanna mention is this calculation is based on the customer ID. What happens if the user resorts it based on another field? Well, that's gonna scramble those counting numbers, right? You sort it on last name, scrambles it again. Can we fix this? Yes, we could. And we will cover that in the extended cut for the members. 
Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, not just this one. You get all of them and everybody gets some free training. But notice in this example here, I sorted it by first name. This renumbered itself and you can see the IDs are all out of order. Here's the database from the extended cut, right? It's sorted by first name. I'll sort it by last name now. Click and you can notice that the list resorts. Sort it by state and the list resorts. See, this does involve a little tiny bit of programming, not much. Requires a little loop and uh, maybe 10 lines of code. It's not that bad. But if you want to see how to do it, join today. It's not expensive. You get tons and tons of free training, all kinds of stuff. So there you go. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.